Go ahead and get your sword and turn with me to the book of Daniel. Ah, uh, my God, chapter 6. Daniel chapter 6. Yeah, I'm getting settled, Christian. That's good. Daniel chapter 6, starting at verse number 1. And it's our custom here going on for Christ Church. And if you can and you are able, we ask that everyone please stand out of reverence, not to me, not to this church, but to God who died for this church. So we ask for everyone to please stand and can. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Daniel chapter 6, starting at verse 1. Do you have it? Come on and say amen. And the word of God reads, Darius, the me decided to divide the kingdom into 120, 120 provinces. And he appointed a high officer to rule over each one. The king also chose Daniel and two others as administrators to supervise the high officers and protect the king's interests. Y'all see the principle? The king chose Daniel. He also chose two others to supervise. That's order. Y'all with me? Verse 3 says, Daniel soon, uh-oh, proved himself more capable than all the other administrators and high officers. Because of Daniel's great ability, the king made plans to place him over the entire empire. <laughs> character will always separate you. You ain't going to do nothing. Yeah. Just walk in a different level of character and it will separate you Amen. from the pack. It says, because of Daniel's great ability, church, the king made plans to place him over the entire empire. Verse 4 says, the, then the other administrators and high officers began searching for some fault in the way Daniel was handling government affairs, but they couldn't find anything to criticize Akadim. He was faithful, always responsible, and completely trustworthy. Soon as God promoted the king, God promoted him through the king. The same people that was with him turned on him. Are you really ready for promotion? Are you really ready for some of those friends that know a whole lot of stuff about you that you can fight in that when God began to take you as Pastor Helen prophesied to the next level, personally as well as corporately in this church, are you ready for those friends that you really thought was your friends to turn yeah. on you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Soon as God promoted them, they look for an opportunity to try to pull them down. Everybody ain't happy for you. Verse five so they concluded the only chance of finding grounds for accusing Daniel would be in connection with the rules of his religion. So the administrators and high officers uh, went to the king and said, long live King Darius. Watch the strategy of the enemy. We are all in agreement. One thing about devils, they don't fight. They don't gossip. They don't lie. When it comes to each other. They are unified. They are in agreement on the mission that they have been sent out to accomplish by the enemy. You don't see devils bickering and arguing like you see Christians. Gossiping, lying, spreading false information throughout the body of Christ. That's them ain't nothing but divine strategies of the enemy to destroy and dismantle unity and momentum and strength. Oh, that's why the Bible says this is a spiritual warfare. And you don't wage war after the flesh. That's why you never let another human being, I don't care if they do profess to be a Christian, ever pull you into stuff that you know that the Bible decrees is unhealthy and ungodly. I don't care how long you know them. If they gossiping, they lying, and they bringing false assumptions to you, then you ought to say the devil is a lie. I bind you, get behind me, Satan, in the name of Jesus. Yep, you speaking to the spirit that the devil will use in your home, girl, or your homeboy, even your minister, even your pastor. My God can be oppressed by a spirit of wickedness and evilness. Anytime somebody comes to you, my God, with something that contradicts the word. But see, we don't know what the word says. That's why we don't know how to rebuke the devil. Because we think what they're saying to us, because it sounds good, that it's God. Everything that sounds good, look good, and is good, ain't God. Right. 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 Father God, I'm going to stop right there because I had some more verses to read, but God has already spoke. Father, I thank you. Oh, my God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for importation. Thank you for revelation. Expose. 
encourage, motivate. We still in the spirit, Father God. We still moving to the next level. This, top, this topic that you have placed in my spirit, Father God, who, my God, must be rooted in our system, my God, of our, of our soil, Father God, in order for us to go to the next level. Uh, we can't just shout. We can't just speak in tongues, Father God. We got to operate in faith in order to go to the next level, Lord. Mm. So, Father God, you will allow storms, Father God, and situations, who, my God, to come into our lives because you're trying to build our faith for where you're taking us, individually as well as corporately, Father God. I know because the Word of God says it. It decrees that Old Testament Testament and it declares that New Testament, Father God, that you would use things, people, places, and things, Father God, to execute your will. So, Father God, teach us how, Father God, submit to your spirit and not wrestle, Father God, with flesh and blood in the natural, but help us to remind ourselves to understand, Father God, this is spiritual warfare. Who, my God, and the enemy is terrified of our destinies, terrified of the plan of God that he had for our lives corporately as well as individually, and he's going to use and do anything he can, Satan, to try to destroy, disrupt, or dismantle. Matter, Father God, what you're trying to do. But I decree revival. I decree next level, Father God. I create out, decree an outpouring of your spirit, Father God. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Come on and say amen. amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord, my God. I promise you, uh, when you decree something, when you're in right standing with God, it has significant substance and power. It was not just words. You have the authority, my God, to decree. The Bible says you can call those things that be not as though they are. You got creative power in your words. That's why the Bible says life and death is in the power of the tongue. Please don't ever allow the enemy to use your tongue the wrong way. In this text, Daniel teaches us that consistent, consistency pays off. It isn't all about how you start a race or about how you finish. Although both are important, church, God is interested in us running faithfully all the way. We have many people in life that are great starters, but terrible finishers. We run so far, and then we feel like we don't need to run no more. But the Bible says that those that endure all the way to the shortcut, all those that endure the halfway point, and see, don't even, it don't even bear witness with our spirit. He says, all those, Pastor Tedger, that endure to the end. Do you got a mindset to finish? Yeah. Think about that. See, somebody should be writing that down, asking yourself, do I really got a mindset to finish? Philippians 1 and 7 says, he who begun a good work is able to complete it to the day of Jesus Christ. But you and I, I and you, might God have to allow God to finish what he started. He desired to finish it, but we get in his way. Are y'all with me so far? Hallelujah. And so, so, so both are important, how you start and, and even how you finish, my God. God is interested in us running faithfully, as I stated, all the way. Hebrews 12, 1 through 3, write that down. Hebrews chapter 12, 1 through 3. It says, therefore, since we are surrounded, oh, my God, the writer talking to the church, my God, the, those that has went on to glory. See, people are looking at you that went on to glory. Some of your loved ones, some of your family members that you know that has crossed over and went on to glory, uh, that's that great cloud of witness, Paul and Moses and Joshua, my mama, my grandmother, my God, even my sister, my God. Y'all need to come on and go with me, my God. There's a cloud of witnesses, Grant, my God, who my God is looking Spurning you on, the Bible saying. You can do it, Amber. You can do it, my God. You can do it, Francis. You can do it, Sharon. Oh, my God. You got people pulling for you, my God. That's already been crossed over, my God. Oh, my God. Surrounded by such a crowd of witnesses to the life of faith. I want you to understand something. I'm going to take my time and teach you. I might not even get finished. You are enlisted into a life of faith. You can't have good faith that start good and then it get weakened over a period of time. Your faith should go stronger over a period of time, not weaker. If you got enough faith to come give your life to Christ, then why don't you have enough faith to, for like God to keep you on your way to Christ? See, the Bible said we are being sanctified. If we got enough faith to come to Christ, do we got enough faith to allow Christ to sanctify us and take us all the way to the finish line? 
Do we got enough faith that, my God, what Jesus said, those that endure to the end. Is your faith anchored enough, my God, to endure to the end in this hour? Y'all see the same thing I see on social media. Y'all see the news. Y'all listen to the news. This world is wicked and it's getting even worse than the Bible says, my God. And I want you to know something tonight, my God. If your faith ain't anchored, if your mind ain't set, my God, I promise you, even the elect, the Bible says, will be tricked and fooled and turn away from God. How in the world did that happen? Oh my God, how did that, you mean to tell me that pastor people no longer serve God? Hard as he was going? What happened? Jakes, what happened? Uh, uh, all these great men of God that you think that's going on in the heaven? My God, the Bible says even the elect, that means those that you were for sure that was going to heaven, will be even fooled, will be turned away, will turn away. Think about some of the pastors, I'm trying to teach you, that is renouncing Christianity, that had 10,000, 20,000 member churches. I'm in the spirit, y'all got to go with me, baby. We ain't dealing with the clubs tonight. Yeah. Think about the great men of God that y'all seeing that is turning away and renouncing Christianity. That's right. People that you know that led thousands, not, if not hundreds of thousands of people to Christ, that said, I'm no longer Christians. I no longer believe, my God, in Jesus, even the elect. We're talking about something tonight, baby. We're going somewhere. I promise you. So you are enlisted into a life of faith. Shouting, clapping, even sowing seed, even reading your Bible. Everything that you do should be done in faith. The Bible says there's anything, my God, Marco, that's not done in faith is sin. It, anything that you and I, who, my God, that don't do by faith is sin. So it took faith to get in your car to drive from your job or from your house to come to church. So anything that we do, that's why when you pray, my God, you got to bless your food in faith. When you stand before God and say, I do, you're standing before God and say, in faith. Think about that. Anything that we do, that's why, that's why I was telling one of, my, one of my sons, my God, here tonight, my God, we sin every day. There's so many areas in our life where we sin and fall short. There's so many places, there's so many things, there's so many thoughts that's going on in our mind in the course of a 24-hour day. you got to constantly stay in the mindset of repentance. That's why it troubles me, my God, when people can come in the house of the Lord and they never see a need to come and repent and say, God, forgive me for my thoughts, forgive me for my words. Come on, somebody. Never should you come to the presence of the Lord and not find nothing. I don't care. If you come to the presence of the Lord, God will find something inside of you and I, I and you, that is ungodly. Something that we thought, something that we said. Something that we have forgot about, the Spirit of God will bring back to our remembrance, my God. There is never not a time when you and I don't need to say, God, forgive me for my sins. Be knowingly and unbeknownly. And so the Bible says, my God, that we live a life of faith. And then the Bible tells us in Hebrews to strip off. You know, you got, yeah, you got to get naked. You got to get naked per se. Strip off what? Strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the capital S-I-N. That so easily trips you and I. Sin trips you and I. It'll make you stumble. Many of us are stumbling. <laughs> oh, my God. T.D. J. Pre <laughs> preached a sermon, my God, called I'm stumbling my way on into heaven, my God. Uh, that's good, but I don't want to stumble. I'd rather walk on my way to heaven. I don't want to be stumbling. I don't want to be stumbling all the time. I don't want to be shipwrecking and making the, constantly making the same old mistakes and all that. Keep repenting about the same old thing. Keep talking about that. I don't want to be doing all that. Oh, my God. I want to go in, my God, walking in. I want to go in in triumphant way. Do I got a witness out there? Amen. And let us run with endurance. It's going to take endurance. It's like when I'm in the gym driving. It takes endurance, my God, to run this race that is set before you and I. And then he tells us you, you live a life of faith. You strip off weights, my God, the sins and stuff. You do this by keeping your eyes fixed on Jesus. Now let me help you understand something. You strip off weights. You run with endurance. I posted this and I'm going to say it again. Wherever you set, you seek. Wherever you set your focus, that's what you seek at the where you set. If I'm set, I'm coming to you. I can see you. So I'm coming to you. If I set on Sharon, I'm going to Sharon. Where you set your mind, where you set your focus, that's what you seek at the Where your focus at tonight? We in the house physically, but as we set on God. See, he tells you how you run this race and live this life of faith. You do it, my God, by setting your eyes, setting your focus, setting your desires. Setting your passions, uh -huh. oh my God, on Jesus. Mm -hmm. Guess what Jesus said? He lives within, but he also sits at the right hand right. of the Father. So you got to set your mind on things above and quit setting your mind on everything that you're dealing with. 
You see what I'm trying to say? Okay, okay. And so the title of this sermon is, I'm going to talk about consistent faith. Consistent faith. To bring back some context, David, I mean, Daniel had very consistent faith. And as I was reading, my God, I didn't see this, my God, but when you flip over into uh, uh, chapter 5, where King uh, 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 Belshazzar had a dream, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and there was some writing on the wall, I'm sorry, some writing on the wall, and he couldn't find nobody to interpret it, and so therefore Daniel ended up interpreting it and so forth. And he was a blessing to the king, then right after that, in the next chapter, in chapter 6, he found himself thrown into the lion's den. Soon as he was a blessing, he ended up going through a trial. He, he interpreted Pastor Tedrick, the writing on the wall. Uh, my God, come on, somebody. And because he had a bunch of enemies, uh, Sam Ballas and Tobias, they were jealous because the king found favor in him and he promoted him. And the people that was once walking with him because he went to the next level, my God, they got envious and they conjured up a lie. to try to accuse him, my God. I come against his relationship with God. Don't you know that people was coming in this hour is going to try to come against your relationship with God. And so therefore, these people came against Daniel's relationship with God. But he, 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 he interpreted, my God, the writing on the wall. And then he found himself because of his conviction, because of his love for God, because of his consistency, and because of his commitment. Oh, my God, notice how I use those words, because those words will get you in a lot of trouble when you walk with God. Yeah, yeah. Faithfulness, consistency, love for God, dedication. Uh, I'm talking about in God, not in the natural. Yeah. Uh, those words, my God, Brian, will get you in trouble when you're serving God because, see, when you're consistent, when you're loyal, come on, somebody, when you're faithful, my God, when you ain't double-souled, that means double-minded, my God, when your heart is fixed, my God, now you become a threat to the enemy. Yeah. If you're scattered brain and you're scattered mind and you're all over the place, you're not no threat. If you're ineffective and unproductive with your knowledge, you're not a threat. Come on, if you ain't anchored in the things of God, you're not a threat. Come on, if you ain't flipping the pages, you're not a threat. If you're not praying, my God, if you're not moving forward and pushing forward, my God, you're not a threat. If you're always complaining, gossiping, lying, and poor me paying them old uh, 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 victim prayers, as Pastor Helen said, you're not a threat to the devil. Yeah. Yeah. Daniel was a threat because of his convictions. His loyalty, his commitment to God, not to the king. In this story, to bring context, Daniel went against the decree. Anytime someone go against a decree that a king made, you learn this automatic death. And so God gave Daniel favor with the king. And so, my God, because the king put a signet ring, my God, on this decree, uh, and, 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 and them guys, the administrators went up there and found David, I mean, Daniel in his room praying like he always do. So the king couldn't go back on his decree. So he had to honor his word. Catch that. A true king has to honor his word. Yeah. You're kings and queens. You really are. You're high priests. Yeah. Kings and queens. So therefore you should be men and women of your word. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, got and so therefore, my God, the king made a decree. Old Testament decree, New Testament declare. My God made a decree that he could not go against. And so, therefore, he had to throw Daniel into the lion's den, even though God gave favor to Daniel, to the king. But because of the decree, I'm, I'm redundant, but, but, but because of the decree, let me slow down. Because of the decree, the king had to honor the decree. And so, this was his guy. But because of the decree, I got to do what I got to do. Throw him in the lion's den. Okay, y'all ready? Y'all ready? Yeah. Because of my word, because if I go back on my decree, yeah. if I go back on my word, it's going to render me powerless with the kingdom, the people. Well, what, 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 what King Darius, you change your mind when Daniel was faced with my a God. situation. Yeah, yeah. Well, Mally, you did that for Brian. Well, Sharon, you did that for Champ. See, see, now your word don't carry the substance because a king makes a decree and he don't change his decree. That's heavy kingdom teaching right there. We say stuff, but we take it back. Can I tell you what that's called? Contract, not covenant. We do things out of contract and not covenant. Covenant cannot be broken. The Bible says we serve a God of covenant. That's why blood had to be sacrificed. 
That's why they gave sheep and bullocks, my God, uh, blood, my God. Come on, somebody. Uh, without the shedding of the blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. Uh, Indians, Indians, when they shake hands, they cut each other's hand. They cut, and then they do a blood covenant. Like a uh, uh, man's word meant something back in the mm, 50s and 60s, my God. You can't trust nobody there, even in the church. I ain't talking about the world. I'm talking about the church. Our words mean nothing in society today. Oh, yeah. Good teaching. This Bible study. Y'all shouted all Sunday, well, we're going to come back down to earth and live by faith now. So point number one, my God, when you have consistent faith, it will be tested. Let me tell you what that means. When you have a made up mind, it's going to be tested. The devil's going to come to see if you're really going to go hard for God. Uh, I've been tested in that. I'm going to leave that alone because I want to get through with this. My God, uh, I told the Lord that I was going on to see what the end of a saved life is going to be like when I was in prison. And my God, I have been tested, tried in every capacity you could think of. The enemy tried to get me to quit way before I ever even accepted the call to pastor a church. Three days after I get out of prison, after doing four years, I got locked right back up for a case. Case they tried to refile on me, going down there to do the right thing. Dirty dads to pay my court costs, and they and they was taking a long time. They throw me back in jail for another three weeks. Ended up getting the case dismissed because it was statute of limitation ran out. But the enemy was trying to frustrate me and discourage me right then. Here I am. I'm going down there to do the right thing. Uh, and I set up to make to pay my court costs, and I ended up in jail three more weeks. Just got out of prison. wasn't even out three days. Thrown right back in prison. That was the first attack that the enemy tried to use to discourage me. Well, for the first time in my life, I went to the jailhouse. I didn't go to David L. Moss. It was county jail. Oh, my God. And I had Bible study for the first time ever. Because when I came home from prison, I was set free and delivered. Yeah. See what I'm trying to say? And so the enemy jail tried to discourage me right then. You do four years and you get out three, di three days and you go back to prison, I mean back to jail for three weeks, that could have discouraged me. Keep in mind, let me help you understand something. I'm still with the sermon. Let me help you understand something. At this time, I had two months before I got out of prison, my grandma had crossed over with cancer. I got to go to the funeral. Why my grandma had, uh, was fighting her life for cancer, my baby sister, uh, Anita Peoples, uh, uh, was battling her life for cancer with breast cancer, and my mama at the same time was dying. So my grandma, sister, and mama all was dying from cancer at the same time. Grandma, two months before I get out, I get locked up, and my mama is dying, and my sister both are dying of cancer. If I ever need an excuse, I'm talking about faith that will remain. I'm talking about consistent faith. Oh, my God, quit talking about you got faith and ain't ready to be tested. Tested, my God. Real faith is going to be tested, I promise you. Daniel's faith, my God, in his God. Was tested. Watch this. Uh, in 2 Timothy 3.12 it says, Yes, everyone who wants to live a godly life in Jesus Christ will suffer persecution. 2 Timothy 3.12 Everyone who wants to live a godly life in Jesus Christ will suffer persecution. Let me say that right there. I got many reasons, Amber. I got many reasons, Christians. I just gave y'all some. Why I love God the way I love God. Keep in mind, I'm trying to learn how to live in society apart from gang life and crack cocaine addiction. If I ever need an excuse, Pastor Tedrick, to quit. If I ever need an excuse to relapse. If I ever need an excuse to go back to doing anything that God delivered me from, I had it right then. But God reminded me. I'm still with my sermon. You told me in prison you was going on to see what the end. Your pastor been tested. I earned the right to speak in your life. I earned the right to pastor the way God has allowed me to pastor. Yeah, 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 yeah. But this day and time, people don't want to be pastor, they want to be preached to. Pastor means you got to put your hands on it. Preach to me, just preach to me, let me go. Don't tell me to change, don't tell me to stop. I don't, you know, say, don't tell me I got to do right, don't tell me I got to live holy, don't tell me I got to forgive, don't tell me I got to live. See, that's preaching. If you tell me, if you start doing all that, now you're pastor, I don't want to be pastor. Just preach to me and let me go. And thank God that I gave you $2. That's the mindset of the church. But consistent faith will be tested. Have anybody been tested? Okay, hands down. Is anybody going through a test? Let me help you with understand something. If you have already made your mind up that you're going to serve God, the things that you blame the devil, blame it on the devil, ain't the devil. It's a test. That's why the Bible says, think it not strange. Think it not strange. Think it not strange when fiery trials come upon you out of nowhere. You the one said you love God. 
You the one clapped your hands. You the one cried out, holy, holy, holy. Well, you think the enemy don't see that? But this is what you got to understand, because let me help you understand something. The devil tempts you, because temptation always will lure you away from God. God tests his, tests his people. Test, prove you. Test, purify you. Test, mold you. God don't never tempt you. My God, he ain't going to send me back to my former life to try to prove a point. Temptation always will lure you away from God. So you got to be able to recognize, are you being tempted to backslide? Are you being tempted to quit? Are you being tempted to sin? Because if that's the case, that's the devil. But if you're being tested, my God, that's of God. Submit to it and let God mold you and shape you from the test. And, and quit running from the test and blaming everything on the devil. Because if you look at your test that come from God as, as, as the devil, then you're going to miss the lesson that God is trying to teach you in the midst of the test. Oh, if I had three hours to teach, I could teach all day. Uh, don't miss the lesson that God is trying to teach you in the test. Because you're thinking, my God, the test is, is from the devil. No, it's from God. I just read it to you. All those that desire to live godly shall suffer persecution. Why do God have to use persecution? I don't know. But if you think about fire, fire purifies. Fire, the hotter the fire, the pure the faith. Ooh, my God. So that fire that he turned up on his pastor, he, he know what he's doing because he know where he's taking us. Remember, destiny is waiting on us. And some of the faith that you and I, I and you got, I'm going to be keeping on a dollar. I'm going to be transformed. The faith that it's going to take to do what has been prophesied in this ministry, I ain't there yet. So God got to say, okay, I got to drop you. Got to drop you in the fire. I got to strengthen your faith. I got to enlarge your capacity. I got to allow you to go through it now, my God. Because when you're going, you're going to have to have that, ah, that real, real type faith, that anchored faith that don't quit, that don't give up on God, don't go get intoxicated off the harvest. My God, come on, somebody. God is trying to prepare you for where you're going. That's why it's uncomfortable. Then you had consistent faith. Key word, consistent. He didn't quit no matter what came his way. I'm not saying you, don't, you can't get frustrated, but you never quit. Yeah. I'm going to take a sabbatical and quit going to church. That devil is a lie. Show me that in the scripture where Jesus took a sabbatical. I just need some time to myself. Please. This verse, my God, is absolutely true, y'all. If you choose to live your life for Jesus, holding nothing back, my God, persecution will come your way. Notice, my God, what is accomplished when Daniel, my God's faith was put to the test. Write this down. When your faith is put to the test, when my faith and your faith is put to the test, write this down upon the point number one. The believer is cultivated. God is trying to cultivate you. God is trying to develop you. God is trying to prepare you. There are things, my God, that you don't know, my God, that you have to have in order for you to be what God has called you to be. There's things that God has to allow, church. Listen to me. I'm going to father you. There's things that God has to allow you to go through because he's cultivating you. He's developing you. Really, he is nurturing you. He's nurturing you and I. He's not trying to hurt you. He's trying to develop you. So that you can dominate the earth, not go to heaven. Yeah. If you have not fulfilled your assignment on earth, then you are an intruder if you're trying to get to heaven. Mm -hmm. God don't need you and I in heaven. He needs you and I down here on earth. Yeah. That's right. That's right. That's right. The late Dr. Miles, rest his soul, him and Dr. Ruth, my God, went on to glory because the late Dr. Miles and Ruth finished their assignment. Yeah. So he said, it's time for you to go home. So he didn't allow neither one of them to remain by themselves because he knew they loved each other. He was together for 50 years. He said, I can't take one. I got to take them both. Yeah. I told my baby, if we got to go, let's go together. Yeah. I told God, and I mean that. I don't want to be without mine. And she don't want to be without me. If I got to die, let me die with my wife. And I mean that. And I'm not, I'm not in my feelings. I'm telling y'all. My God, what we have prayed about and what we talked about, we don't want to go without each other. Yeah, we, are constant, we constantly reference the late Dr. Miles and, and Dr. Roof. If we got to go, let's go like that. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to be without mine. Amen. Amen. So if you think you had a shot, I'm sorry. Yeah. Because I'm in love with mine. I love mine. Yeah, yeah, I'm a young soldier and I love mine, baby. 
But God is trying to cultivate you. Look at look at verse three. Look at verse three. Look at verse three. Look at verse three. Pastor got a sense of humor. Pastor got. Look at verse three. It says Daniel soon proved himself more capable than all the other administrators and high officers because of Daniel's great ability. The king made plans to place him in over the entire empire. Just like Joseph. Sound like Joseph. See what I'm trying to say? My God, he, because of his great ability. Daniel was already a great man, church. God wanted to develop him even farther. Now, can you imagine this? This man was already great. He was already sharing set apart because of his great ability, his wisdom, his knowledge. He was already top of the line, Minister T Pastor Tedger. He was already at a whole nother level. And God said, I ain't through with you. Yeah. Think about that. Christian, look at me. This man was already functioning, soaring, and operating at a very, 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 very high level, naturally and spiritually. And God said, I still got to develop you. So what makes you think you and I have arrived? So what we got 51,000 square feet? I ain't arrived. So what we got a few members, 100 people tonight? I haven't arrived. So what I don't gang bang, smoke dope, and cheat on my wife? I have not arrived. So what makes you think you have arrived? What makes you think you don't need to read your Bible? What makes you think you don't need to pray? What makes you think you don't need to forgive? What makes you think you don't need a man's encounter and a woman's encounter? Oh my God, Miss Self-Righteous? I'm just keeping it on the dollar. Consistent faith will be tested. And oh my God, and God uh, cultivated Dave, Daniel because he needed some more things in his life to be purged. He saw it, woman of God. But God saw something that Daniel didn't see. That's why you got to allow say, Spirit, search me. Yeah. And my prayer is, and when you find. Yeah. When you find. When you find. Yeah. Ooh, Sharon, adopt that from your yeah. past. Search me, and when, when you, you find, find, show it to me. Because yeah. he going to find something if you yeah. really let him search you. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. We deal with the internal, not the external. They can jump and shout out there, baby. We're going to get dealt with up in here. Come on, somebody, because I want us healthy. Your trials is never meant to destroy you. They're only to grow you. You have to believe that. Some of you right now, please hear your pastor's heart and hear what the word of God says. According to Romans 8, 28, all things work together. You know that. And then Jeremiah 20, 11, God has plans. God is never trying to hurt you and I. Some of you right now is somewhat lightweight, bitter at God. Questioning everything that's going on in your life. Yeah, it seems hard. Well, God is teaching you. He's trying to cultivate you. God ain't trying to hurt you. Why would God try to hurt you? He died for you. He loved you. He could have let you die in your sin. He could have left me and my brother-in-law, my God, in the penitentiary. We could have died out there in them streets, my God. Who granted, he could have left us. God ain't trying to hurt you. He's trying to help you. Yeah. It was good for me that I was affliction. Oh, for affliction is good for a real believer. Affliction is good for a real Christian. God ain't trying to hurt you. I can't get nobody to clap on that right there because don't nobody want to go through nothing. Oh, my God. Go on off and give me five people. Give God some glory in the church. My God. Oh, don't sit down on me. Don't sit down on me. Yeah, my God, I'm sorry. I, I know y'all thinking. I know y'all thinking, but it was good for me. It was good for me. You have to adopt that. Because if you adopt that mindset that it's good for me and that God loves me and God is not trying to hurt me, then you will be able to adjust and you will be able to adapt to the testing that's going on in your life. You won't see it as mm, punishment. You will see it as a lesson to take you on where you're going. Hmm. Thank you, Lord. Up on the point number one, write this down. Uh, the power of consistence, my God, dear. God dealt with the cultivation. Also, too, uh, Jesus is celebrated. Oh, when you got consistent faith. Let me prove it to you. Verse 25 says, give me a minute. 25 says, then King Darius sent this message to the people of every race, nation, and language throughout the world. This is what the king said. Because remember, he wasn't a believer. Of this God that Daniel served. But because of consistent faith, cultivated faith, tested faith. Come on, come on, watch this. this and, and, and he passed the test in the lion's den, dirty dies. My God, this is what the king now decreed. Throughout the world, he says, peace and prosperity to you. I decree that everyone throughout my kingdom should tremble with fear before God and Daniel. For he is the living God, and he will endure forever. The kingdom will never be destroyed. His kingdom will never be destroyed, and his rule will never end. He rescues and saves his people. Talking about the king, talking about 
Daniel's God, your God. He performed miraculous signs and miracles in the heavens and on the earth. He has rescued Daniel from the power of the lion's den. So Daniel prospered during the reign of Darius and the reign of Cyrus in, the per in Persia. So, my God, because Daniel stood in the midst of the lion's den, because he had consistent faith. Thank you for these principles you dropped in my spirit. My God, he, 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 because of his faith, he caused an unbelieving king to recognize the true and living God. Who somebody should have shot it. Because of his consistent faith, he caused an unbelieving king, huh? oh my God, to acknowledge his God. Oh my God, God got some of you on trial It's called faith on trial, baby Because he's trying to show himself off to you, my God he's, mm, My God, I wish I had time, my God Oh my God, this king came to believe He came to respect, he came to honor Daniel's God Because Daniel, Daniel was steady Daniel was consistent Daniel was loyal Daniel was faithful Daniel was sold out Daniel was going home for Christ Somebody give God a hand, baby Oh my God. Mm. Consistent face, my God, will cause Jesus to get the glory. Also, write this down right here. Uh, the sinner will be convicted. Uh oh. Look at this right here. Verses 4 and 5. Look what it says. Let's go a little deeper. Then the other administrators and high officers began searching for some fault in the way Daniel was handling government affairs. That means how he was conducting himself in the kingdom. Pastors, government affairs. They tried to find somehow he was pastoring and dealing with the affairs of the king as well as in the kingdom. Right. Bring it up to our speed. That's people that's always looking for fault. Yeah. Always got their mouth mm -hmm. on people that's in leadership. Yeah. Always trying to find a way to throw stones. Mm -hmm. Always looking to discredit you. Yeah. It's sad, man, in the body of Christ. Everywhere. Yeah. Everywhere. The same people that he shoveled sheep done with, losing David, but how he warred with, how he done things with. I can imagine Daniel being who he is, Shay. He prayed for these same administrators, and look how they stabbing him in the back because of jealousy. Everybody ain't happy for going off for Christ. They sure ain't happy for me. They still think I'm fake and being a hypocrite. They still think I'm selling dope and game bank. I hear it all the time. I'm 24 years, complete clean and sober. Ain't been in no trouble. Ain't never went back, and they still. I, I, no, 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 they still think that it ain't real. They still think, my God, that, that he, 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 this can't be true. Yeah, yeah. People looking at you right now saying, it can't be true. Yeah. Uh, she can't be transformed. She can't be that person no more. Uh, she still can't. She can't be a, a different Rahab. Come on, somebody. <laughs> she can't be a different Rahab. Come on, somebody. Oh, you mean Timmy, she don't get out like that no more? No, 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 no. Still looking. I said all that because, see, the enemy's always trying to attack me. I always tell you, he's trying to kill me. I know he's terrified of me, baby. And you should think like that for yourself. And this is what I'm trying to say, and I'm moving on. I see you, Brandon, back there. You're catching this. The enemy will use as the king of going off of Christ's church. I understand God is the king. Y'all know what I'm saying? The very administrators that help govern the kingdom will rise up against the king out of jealousy, especially when they see God start taking me where he's taking me. Instead of them being happy for us as a family, they get jealous. They start trying to discredit the ministry and lying and spreading rumors. That's just the way ministry is, baby. It's a cutthroat game. Are you really ready? Are you really ready? Are you really ready for revival? Are you really ready for the things that have been prophesied in this church? I'm just trying to get you ready. I'm just trying to get you ready. I'm trying to get you ready. I'm trying to get me ready. Are you really ready for the enemy to try to get inside of worship? And cause problems. Wash them. Wash them. That's a tall order. If he can get in, he's going to come. Everybody that's in wash them that's not submitted, my God, I'm going to see because I've been praying, show me, God. Show me because this ain't a stage to perform, baby. This is a stage to serve right here, baby. Oh, my God, this is real serious over here. Everybody that ain't with you. Oh, my God, you got to pay a price. My God, how can he get in? Close the doors. Close the doors of your life. Close the I'm speaking prophetic in your life. Prophetically, close the doors. Close the entry levels to the enemy getting into your life. Oh, my God, I know God is testing, but some of us got doors open, and it ain't God, it's the devil. And you mad at everybody else, but it's your fault because you got your doors open. You got your legs open. Close the doors to your house. Close the doors to your mind. 
Close the doors to your mind. Close the doors to your eyes. Job said, I made a covenant with my eyes that I may not sin against God. Close your doors to the ears. Couldn't let people come and dump on you. Couldn't let people come and lie and talk to you about stuff that the enemy is trying to use to destroy you. Close the doors. When Daniel heard that the king made a decree, the Bible says, woman of God, I like this side over her for some reason tonight. Oh, my God, when Daniel heard that the king made a decree, dirty dies, he just started going around talking to people. The Bible says he did what he's always done. Went up into his room, opened up his window and prayed. Why do you always got to get to 411? Why? Jesus said, be careful what you lend your ear to. Stay out of church politics. Quit repeating stuff. I'm pastoring you. That ain't true. Don't let people tell you stuff that's going on and, and, and it don't be true. I'm not only just talking to the church. I'm talking to those that's looking because we got a lot of people that follow us. I'm pastoring the people, not just at 205 South Sheridan, y'all. Come on, let's give God a hand. These men were disturbed by Daniel's faith. They knew that he possessed something that they didn't have. They didn't have what Daniel had, so they got jealous and envy. And so they tried to lie against his relationship with God. That's how people do. The Bible says the enemy comes to assassinate our character. He's the father of lies. He's the accuser of the brethren. They tried to accuse Daniel before the king. But when you know you ain't doing what people are saying, you had to do like your pastor kept doing from the day he got home. Just kept right on walking. I'm going on. Yeah, I'm going on to see what the end of a saved life going to be like. Ain't no shadow of turning. I'm going on. Because you know why I say that? Because the Bible says every tongue that rises up against you. If it's false, the Bible says it shall be utterly cast down. Like, that's why you always hear me say when God gave me that revelation, if you don't want people bringing up your past, quit living your past. And then you want to get mad at them because all they're doing is, uh, is criticizing and talking about what you're showing them. Quit showing them. Don't give them no ammunition against you. You already got enough accusing from the, from the devil. Why you want to, who my God, live, some, live one way in here and one way out there, and now you're mad because everybody's got you on blast. When you post something about God on Facebook, somebody come back, my God, I said, oh, you ain't living nothing, my brother. Ain't and now you mad and tripping and you banging on Facebook. And you mad at them. Well, there might be some truth to the fruit that you burn. Might be some fruit. Might be some truth to the fruit that you burn. All I'm trying to say is if you don't want people to continue to criticize you about the old you, the first Adam, then quit presenting the first Adam. The first Adam should be dead anyway. We push a pattern in our life after the second Adam, which is Jesus the Christ. Somebody give God a hand. Consistent. Faith ain't faith until it's tested. One year reading yesterday. Isaiah, just write it down, chapter 7, verse number 9. Israel is no stronger than its capital, Samaria, and Samaria is no stronger than its king. Pekah, sons of Ramaliah, I don't know how to pronounce the name, but unless, watch this, Isaiah prophesying to the nation, he said, unless your faith it's firm. Yeah. I cannot make you stand. Yeah. Unless your faith is no faith. firm, yeah. I cannot make you stand. Yeah. Everything that's going on in your life, y'all listen to me because here comes a prophetic word out of my spirit. Everything that's going on with you is one thing that the enemy is after of, your faith. Every trial, every situation, every lie, my God, is to attack your faith. Because whoever get the faith, get the life. It's like whoever get the mind, get the life. Because the Bible says, as the woman of God said to Tila, my God, it's impossible to please God without faith. Coming to church, can I help you? 
is your reasonable duty. That don't please God. That clears your conscience. You could be in her every Friday, I mean every Sunday and every Wednesday and on Mondays and stop and not be in faith. Because anything that's not done in faith, mother, is sin. And the enemy is after your faith. The different situations you will encounter in school, in classes and so forth, is ultimately to get you to renounce your faith. Why do you think so many people, woman of God, is turning away and renouncing Christianity? Because the enemy has succeeded in discouraging their faith. One of the greatest enemies to, to Christians, Christians is their discouragement. That's a major enemy. And there's many of us who are right now that's discouraged. Discouragement frustrates your faith. When you are discouraged, you don't want to read. You come in the house of the Lord, my God, you don't feel no unction to move. Yeah. You don't want to read, you don't want to pray, you don't want to forgive, you don't want to tell nobody about Jesus on the outside. Yeah. My God, discouragement, yeah. my God, is a bad boy. Yes, it is. Discouragement, my God, disrupts the firmness and the strength of your faith. Y'all look at me. Discouragement disrupts the firmness and the strength of your faith. And when your faith is weak, you cannot stand and resist the temptation of the devil. Are you with me so far? He's after your faith, the devil. Flip that over. God is after your faith too, but not to destroy you, but to build you so you can resist. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's go a little deeper. Again, people will be disturbed. Let me help you, ladies. Because see, some of y'all can't move up to the next level. I'm still prophetic. Some of you can't move up to the next level, like Vontaze had went up Sunday. It's because you're holding on people that don't want you to go up. You got people that's pulling you down. The ministrators, my God, in the kingdom did not want Daniel to go up. And so they conspired a lie to pull him back down. There's people around you that's trying to pull you back down that you think is your boo. You think that's your girl. You think that's your peanut butter, your cookie, your oatmeal, whatever you call your friend. But they are assigned enemies. The enemy will plot for years before he show his face. I said the enemy will plot for years before he show his face. People will come and get up in your life. And you would think they the oldest and the muchest. Mm -hmm. But if we ain't sensitive enough, right. we ain't praying, we ain't saying, yeah. God, show me the people that's around me. Yes. When you open up your phone, show me the top five people I talk to the most. Them is who you need to be praying, saying, God, show me. Yeah. These five people that I spend the most time with and the most time talking to, the, the people you spend the most time with, y'all be, thank you, Holy Ghost. Who my God, but thank you, Holy Ghost, thank you, Holy Ghost. That the internet has cursed the body of Christ all around the world. Yeah. We being seduced. I teach y'all. Y'all think pastors be up here just talking. My God, you could be anything and anybody on Facebook. Yeah. You're entertaining people, my God, that you'll never get to put your hands on, your eyes on, because they're in different countries and stuff, and you all in love. You spend more time, you can't wait to get home to get on the, on the computer, but instead of go home and pray and read, and, come on. This, I, I'm just trying to help you. Just trying to help you, church. It's trying to help you. Be careful. The Bible says God get warning before destruction. Somebody need to hear that. Somebody need to hear. My God, be careful with your entertainment. Remember, where you set, that's what you seek after. Of. Where you set your focus at, that's what you seek after. Of. When God saved me, I set my focus on him, and I begin to seek him and look at the fruit all these years later. Where your mind set at tonight. Daniel was set on God. And so, therefore, when jealousy rose up against him, Sister Joyce, my God, oh, my God, when the decree was made, he went up into his room to pray. He didn't get into church politics. Yeah. He didn't start going around asking people in the kingdom, Pastor Tedrick, my God, what's going on? What is they saying? What happened? He just went right up to his room, opened up the window. He wasn't trying to hide. He did what he always do because he was a man of faithfulness, trustworthiness, come on, and loyalty, and he just prayed. Yeah. One thing about it. People know if it's one area they can try to get you at, if you're real, and if you're going hard, they'll come against your faith. They'll come against your walk with God. Yeah, There's some principles in this what I'm teaching y'all. Yes, it is. They ain't caring about all the other stuff, my God. But if, you go, if it's one area where you want to really be attacked at, let somebody attack you trying to discredit you because you're standing like a real one for Christ. Yeah, that's real. That's real. If it's one area... 
in your life where you want to be assaulted, lied on, misunderstood, and talked about, let it be in your faith. Why? If you're standing. That's a good test. Because Jesus gets the victory. The Bible says everything, my God, that God does in the life, he wants the glory out of. And so, my God, if God picked you to be consistent and stand, stand. If they go lie on you and talk about you, I'm still with this message because of his commitment to God. Let them do it. Yeah. Just don't let what they say be true. Come on now. Yeah. I'm talking about true, the other side. Yeah. Come on, let's give God a hand. So, consistent faith will be tested. Minister Lanny, the master teacher, say, faith ain't faith until it's tested faith. Okay? And so then, my God, uh, Jesus was celebrated. And don't you know that when you stand, people that surround you is watching you. There is people that don't know your God and my God. That because of your faith will come to know Jesus because of your consistent faith. People, as Pastor Mario used to always say, people need to see how you suffer. Yeah, sometimes God will allow you to go through stuff because he want to put you on display. He put Job on display. <laughs> He put Job on display. <laughs> People need to see uh, how you go through stuff. So God said, oh, I'll pick you. It's your season to enter into Job. People need to see no matter what happened, when they walk out, God walks right in. And you just keep walking. People need to see how you go through. People are watching, dirty dies. That what we talked about, they watching. People, sinners, ungodly people, friends, family, loved ones, mamas, daddies, grandmas, aunties are watching. And some of them are going to come to believe God because of your consistent faith. So, my God, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But you had to go through it because somebody's dependent on your faith because they ain't got no faith. They depended on your faith. And so you got to keep your faith firm. You got to keep your faith strong. And you got to stay anchored so that you can stand. Because who in my life got to suffer if my faith quit? Who in my life got to suffer if I go back? See what I'm trying to say? There's people depending on your faith. A whole kingdom was dependent on Daniel's faith. Because this kingdom did not worship our God. So because of Daniel's consistent faith, he shifted ooh, the whole structure of a kingdom, one man. If I had time, I'd talk to you about the power of one. One man, that's why the Bible says one man. One could put a thousand to flight, and two could put 10,000 to flight. Oh my God, Daniel uh, by himself altered a whole kingdom, Kenny, because of consistent faith. Even when he was thrown in the lion's den, and these lions was hungry, they specifically did not feed them. So when they throw somebody down there, they will devour them before they ever hit the ground. Yeah. But the Bible says, we understand symbolic, he shut the mouth with lions. Visualize in the spiritual realm. Yeah. Lions. And when they open up their mouth, how long their teeth is, Sharon. There's all type of lions all around you and I right now. Ooh, There's lions outside waiting on you right now. There's lions, my God, with long teeth right now, trying to kill you, trying to kill you, trying to kill that baby that's in your arm, Brother Brandon. There's lion, you got to protect that baby. My God, ooh, you got to be the priest, you got to be the prophet, you got to be the king of that home, my God, because there was the decree, there was a decree, there was a decree that was made over 3,000 years ago by Herod, the king, and he said, kill every newborn baby two years old or younger. That decree is still ranking. Look at the abortion epidemic in the world. Kill the babies. Kill the babies. That's why every last one of you ladies, and I'm sensitive, hurry up and ask God to forgive you. And you know what I'm talking about. Because some of the stuff that you and I, I and you done, we did it in ignorance. We didn't know no better. That's why the Bible says, say to those who know to do right, and yet continually choose to do wrong to him and his sin. And the sin is the wages of death. You can't continue, my God, to be fest to be a man or woman of God. And you do everything that goes against the Bible. That's right. And think that God going to bless you. And think God going to open up the heavens. And think God going to protect you. You can't do it your way. You got to do it his way. And so that's why you got to ask God to forgive you. Get that shame up off of you. Get that guilt up off of you. 
Those that has, uh, uh, yeah. get it up off for you. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Get it up off for you. First John 1 and 9. Confess. He's faithful and just to forgive and cleanse from all unrighteousness. Let the scriptures work for you so you don't be walking around in condemnation and guilt. Some of us can't go up to the next level like you see me go up these stairs. Amen. My God. Because we're dealing with that shame or that right there. Fur. Shame and guilt. Even some of us men. We need to repent and ask God to forgive us for even giving the decree for a woman to do that. We just as guilty as her. Oh, yeah. We pastor. We don't preach it going over the We pastor. Oh, she kid alabashanda. Yet alabashi kid abashanda. He kid alabashi kid oboshanda. We'll pick up next week. That right there is a sailor. Going off of Christ, as the musician comes, let's come to the altar. Let's come to the altar. Let's take her business. Let's take her business. Get the shame up off for you. Get the guilt up off for you. If you're struggling with your faith right now, and you're about ready to shipwreck and you want to quit, come to the altar. See what I'm trying to say? You know, if you ain't got no faith to believe God, my God, then you ought to be at the altar. If you're struggling in any capacity, Come on, come on, come to the altar. Come lay it down. Come on, son. Come on, come on, son. Come on. I passed over her, son. Come on. You got stuff you got to bring to God. Come bring it to the altar. Come on, bring it to the altar. Bring the pain. Bring the mistakes. Bring the failures. Bring the bitterness. Bring that stuff. Some of us, you know, we struggling with our faith. We don't believe like we say we believe. Uh, we ain't grounded like we say we are. <laughs> we ain't standing like we think we stand there. Come on, somebody. Yeah, 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 yeah. I quit because the Spirit of God quit, but I know God has spoken. My God, so everybody should be moving. Ah, uh, my God, things is going on. Mm -hmm. Some of us is upset with God because we thought it was the devil, but it was God. And you ought to bring that to the altar. Yeah, 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 yeah. Bring it, lay your kids at the altar. Yeah, yeah, some of you gave up on your kids like I had to repent before y'all Sunday. My God, concerning my own son. If he saved me, he showed up to save my son. He wouldn't have, he wouldn't have the, the wreck that I was. So if God can save me, I know he can save my baby. And he's already saved. He just ain't walked in there yet, but he on his way. I see it by faith, my God. Oh, my God, some of y'all have given up on your marriages. You ought to be at the altar. Oh, my God, you got to be at the altar. You gave up, my God. You're living together, my God, but you ain't, my God, involved with her at the level of him, at the level that you need to be. Oh my God, faith, faith. The enemy is after your faith. You're ready to quit. You're ready to tap out. Oh my God, don't let the enemy rob you. Don't let the enemy take no more from you. Forgive yourself from every mistake, every failure, all the shame, my God. Let it go. Release, 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 release. Come on, Amber, come on, Amber, come on, Amber. Release, 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 release. Come. Who she get out of Oh my God, release. Those at the altar, spend a few minutes. Don't be so quick to get up. Don't be so quick to get up, my God. Spend some time.